right slug over here. I'm going to be giving you a bit of a review of the Skywatcher 140mm reflector, which is a very little first telescope, well, little-ish first telescope. For anyone who's an amateur astronomer out there who's interested in getting their first decent-sized scope. Now this particular telescope comes unassembled, which pretty much means you just have to put it all together when you first get it out of the box. But it only takes about 15 minutes to put it together, so it's not really a big hassle. So, well, what you'll find is when you open the box, is that you'll find all this except in different parts. So what you'll get is you'll get the main optical tube, which is this thing here. And you'll also get the finder scope, which is used to try and help you find planets or stars, whatever you want to look at. You'll get your tripod, you'll get your counterweight balance, you'll get the rod which attaches it. You get different keys that help lock in the telescope and these things down here. You will also get two of these things which are called fine adjustment rods. One would usually go here as well, but I've replaced it and put in the motor which will help counter, uh, counteract the earth rotation. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh, you also get a little rack to help put your eyepieces on. Now with this particular telescope, if I remember correctly, you get three different eyepieces. You get the, well you get a 25mm, and you get a 10mm, and you also get what's called a Barlow lens. And this attaches onto other lenses to create a bigger picture. So what does it all mean? What does 10mm, 25mm, what do those numbers mean? Well, pretty much. The smaller the number, the larger the picture will be for your telescope. So if I had a 10mm and I put it in this telescope, what you'd see is you'd see a smaller field of view, and you'd see a larger image. If I had a 25mm in there, what you'd see is a larger field, larger field of view, but usually the image won't be as good or won't be as enhanced or won't be as clear. Now, as I said in my other video, the way to find out the magnification power of each of the lenses so you divide the focal length of the telescope, divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. So for the 25mm, you get 900, which is the focal length of the telescope, divided by 25, which will give you the power of 36 times. For the 10mm, it will be 90 times. Now what the Barlow lens is used for is that you'll attach this to your other eyepieces. Now what it does is it effectively gives the illusion of doubling the focal length of your telescope. So instead of being 900 millimeters, this would be 1800 millimeters. Now what that's used for is it gives you a somewhat larger magnification when you're looking through your eyepiece. So for example, if I had the a uh, 25 millimeter, instead of being 36 times, it'd be 72 times. If I had the 90 millimeter, it'd be 180 times. However, I wouldn't recommend using it all too often using the Skywatcher 114 millimeter telescope, as although it does give you a larger picture, it just tends to distort it a bit, so the picture quality wouldn't be too wonderful when you're looking through. Now the mount on this particular telescope is called an equatorial mount. Now what that allows you to do, is allows you to counteract the Earth's rotation, instead of just using what's called an alt azimuth mount, which only turns left and right, like that. Now this mount, you can move it in ways like that, and like that which will become very useful because instead of having to use that every time a planet or star moves you have to get away it up and then left and right and anyway it gets a bit of a pain in the ass. Anyway, when you're going to get out your telescope for the first time you're going to have to do something called balancing it. What that means is you'll pretty much put your telescope in the position like so and if it doesn't wobble around or move to one side then it means you have a fairly balanced telescope. If it does however you have to move this counterweight on the left or right. Now I've got it down here because, well, you can see it's balanced, so therefore it's my position for it. Also, if the telescope tends to move either one way or the other, moving this way, you simply, all you simply do is unhook these and then move the telescope either this way or that way until it no longer does this. But yeah. That's pretty much how you balance it. Now how the telescope works, or any reflector basically, is that light from infinity will come out and be shot in into here. Anyway, light will be travel down from infinity, it will go down here into what's called
for the primary mirror, which is all the way down there. Now for the primary mirror, it will be shot back up, reflected, and also for the secondary mirror, which is there. And from there, it will be reflected out to here, as they put your eyepieces. And that is where you'll get your pictures. So you put it like that in there. And, yeah, can't really see anything now because it's aimed there. Anyway, I'm rambling on as I tend to do. There are a amount of accessories which you can get from the Skywatcher. Such things include solar filter. Now what this does is it blocks out pretty much 99% of all light, the 1% being the sun. So, what you'll do with this is you'll place it where the lens cap will usually go. And that just plugs in there pretty much, or not plugs in, it hooks in. When the sun comes down, not only that can get past, and yeah, you can look at the sun. As you can see, it's pretty much a mirror, because, well, not all the sun is pretty bright, so you need to pretty well be able to reflect pretty much everything. You can also get things such as all well, the bilo lens, which I told you before, and things called moon filters. Now, yes, I know that sounds a bit weird, why would you have a filter for the moon, but when you're looking through a telescope, the moon is incredibly bright, so it's going to be, you're looking at pretty much a light bulb. So all this does is that, you attach that into the end of any eyepiece, and it becomes, it doesn't become, it doesn't lose detail in any way, it just becomes a bit darker, so it gives you eyes a bit of a rest. That's pretty much it, Skywatcher. Can't let you know anything else that is essential to tell you, but um, it's worth taking into account that this particular model has 125% more light gathering power than a reflector on the same price. So, if you're going to be looking for it, these things are quite a bit more kind to your wallet and won't leave you as empty. So if you were to buy something like either a refractor or a reflector, I most likely advise you to buy a reflector. Maybe something like that. Obviously for the cost and I personally think that the quality is a fair bit better. Anyway, I hope that somewhat helped you. I'm not entirely sure if you did or not. Most likely didn't, but... Yeah, good luck to all you guys out there who are interested in getting your first telescope, and 